Hey, what's going on, guys? I got some uh, some pipe I want to weld up with you guys today on a rollout landing. We're going with the five peso, five peso landing. And for the gap, we're gonna use this here T. It's not really a 16, but it's not a 332nd. It's a little bit bigger than a 16, though. And we're gonna tack our pipe like this here, guys. But you gotta make sure the inside is damn near perfect. We don't really care about the outside as the pipe's already been messed with by the heat. It's probably oval shape. Get the inside as close as possible, as evenly as possible, guys. We'll, we'll worry about the outside later with the cap, but this is what's crucial for the root pass. Now we're gonna weld this on stick mode and we're gonna give it a 60% dig. We're gonna run it about, let's try 88 amps and we'll go from there. Now remember guys, when you strike an arc, if your keyhole, which is at the leading edge of your puddle, if the keyhole is getting way too big, you probably gotta turn your amperage down. If your 6010 is trying to stick and trying to you know, not penetrating enough. You see all the fire pushing back towards you. You probably got, got to turn your amperage up a little bit. So you want a perfect keyhole. That way you're able to drag at a certain certain rate. And you'll get good at it as uh, uh, the more you practice with, the, with your machine. Because every machine is different. And with the kind of rods you use as well, guys. They also have a 6010 regular rod. The red ones, those are more explosive. They throw out more sparks. And I, uh, I think the arc is a little bit more aggressive. So you gotta run those a little bit, I would say colder in a way, but with uh, less dig. So we're gonna go ahead and try this uh, 6010 plus. So as you guys could see, that's the keyhole right there. And for my liking, it's a little bit too wide. So I gotta turn the amperage a little bit lower so I could get a consistent keyhole. Let's go to 83, see how it works there. See that's the tack right there. Y'all see that keyhole? It's getting as wide as that bead. You want it to be a little bit narrower you don't want to eat up the whole bevel out it creates a more penetration excessive penetration you really want that in the bead you want it to look like a wedding band in there. That's more like it right there, guys. Yes, sir. It's a little bit better. A good tip I could give you guys. So I'm standing here right in front of my rollout. So I'm gonna roll my rollout this way, right? Well, you want the keyholes to be at the bottom part opposite to where you're rolling from. So you want them at the bottom. That way when you're tying in, you're not tying into a keyhole. What I mean by that, let's say I was putting this root in here and I was getting close to the other tack. Well, I'm gonna tie into that there and not the keyhole, if that makes any sense. It gives you an overall better weld. I'm not saying you can't do it. It just looks better, guys. Another tip, guys. Rookie mistake number one. Do not grind on the pipe. Don't take the mill scale off. That's a rookie mistake. What you're actually doing, you're making a mess now with the 6010, 7010, 8010 rods. They're throwing sparks all over, buckshots all over the place. Now without a mill scale on there, guess what's gonna happen to your buckshots? They're gonna stick there harder and it's gonna be harder to remove them. So leave that scale in there. Way to buff out the, the outside of the pipe till you're actually finished with the cap. That's another tip. Now for the tacks, this is how I clean them up. 
side, but I clean them up right there, guys. Now, this side of the pipe is wider, and this one is kind of shut. So I'm probably gonna have to take off on this side of the pipe first to open up the other side, and we'll go from there, guys. Start striking arc at 83 amps, see how it goes, and we'll go from there, roll it out this way. So it's coming out so far so far so good it's a little cold but we're still fully fusing in there as you guys can see and our keyhole still not out of hand now with this keyhole do i grind it no i just kind of flick it with my rod and i go over it guys i'm getting ready to tie into this here so we're pretty much good You guys see that that's the bevel started pushing my rod out because it got a little too tight in there so we got to turn the amperage up now this keyhole still all right but every time the rod gets pushed out by the bevel i like to feather it up a little bit not so much but by turning off the amperage you should be all right now on this side you're getting ready to tie in usually i like to clean the start of that weld as well see that little hump just in case i blow through this tack i know i'm gonna fuse right into this weld uh, uh, again guys so this little pointer right there and that's how it comes out i did see that it was a little bit too slammed so i went ahead and softened that edge up that bevel since it was too close together i grinded it up a little bit just so i could blow, blow right through it like butter like butter now this is your canvas guys inside of that bevel outside of that bevel restricted space no one's allowed here no strike no striking an arc no grinding none of that nothing outside of that pipe all right I don't know if you guys saw that, but I needed a little bit more amperage on there, guys. Uh, I was fighting it around that area right there. I was pushing my rod in too much. You really don't want to fight it, but uh, for this instance, hopefully you guys caught that. That's how you do it. So the technique I use for the six to 10 bead is just simply keep it around that angle, going all the way around the pipe. Now, if the keyhole starts shutting up on you what i do i try to push it this way i don't know if you saw that leaning if i want to open up my keyhole i kind of lean it forward a little bit and push on that way once it's getting out of hand i lean it over this way and it starts building metal back but usually with a perfect gap perfect fit 
you want to leave it around there all the way around all the way around two different ways of cleaning the pipe guys that on the toes of the weld on each side is called the wagon tracks a lot of people like to grind them out me personally i have no issue with them because you're going to burn them out with the 8010 hot pass in there the more trash you leave in there the hotter you could run now the next one is baby butt clean a lot of people like to run them like that i understand uh, not my cup of tea guys now for my hot pass you probably want to turn it up to 130 135 Let's run 130 just in case. We're running at 130 with a 532-8010s. Let's get it. It's starting to turn black. That's because we're cooking that beet in there. Uh, I think we could uh, turn it up a little bit more, maybe 135. I think. I think we'll get away with that again. That's the start of our weld on our hot pass. I went ahead and grinded that little hump down because I know I'm going to be tying in whenever I come around. And at the end of this, again, the same thing. Flick, flick the end of it take off on it you got a little crater in there you got to fill up so don't skip that little crater go back into it That is that for a hot pass. So our beat in there looking pretty good. At least I like to think so. It's cooked in there. That's the way that hot pass looks in there. Little discrepancy there, so I went ahead and grind it out. That's our hot pass. Now, now for our hot pass, guys, I'm using a whip pause technique. So I'm whipping, going back into the puddle, pause, whip, pause as, I, as I'm whipping I'm long arcing and I'm going back into the puddle I'm getting a tighter arc whip long arc go back to the puddle tighter arc whip longer arc go back to the puddle tighter arc now go back right into the puddle where you last left off that way you don't have any missed ripples in between missed ripples that way you could catch some slag so you want to keep it real tight at all times if you got a long whip make sure you go back into the puddle fill it up pause and as far as the hot pass guys you want to make sure you're getting to the toes of those wells remember where the wagon tracks were at you want to know that the actual rod itself is fusing into both sides of the wall
That's how it feels coming out. Ooh, shitty ass pipe. Ready for the cat. Probably gotta turn it up since I'm running 532. I'd rather run this with I mean, schedule 80 pipe, so you'd be better off welding with 5.0s if you had some, but I only got some 532s. I gotta go wide on it, so I gotta turn up the heat a little bit, guys. As you guys could see, the size of that rod and the size of the bevel, it's a little bit wider, so you gotta you know, manipulate that portal around. Bring it around, bring it around, both bevels. If you had a five millimeter rod, you could do the same whip, pause, motion. But since we don't have 532 rods, like I said, we need to turn up the heat because we're gonna go a little bit wider. We're ready for the cap. We still got a lip on the bevels. One thing for sure, whenever I was getting started welding pipe, I would try to fill up as much as possible and I would blow those bevels out and I would be, I'll end up having a bigger size bevel and bigger size cap than I needed. So keep in mind, inside of the bevels is your canvas, guys. Just stick around in the inside. Everything else will fall into place. Getting ready to tie in. That is it guys. That's the way it comes out, capped out. Excuse the pipe. I just gotta clean up the BBs with a file in it. And we'll be ready. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments. Now for the cap guys, the motion I was using was a V, kind of like a V going like this. Let's say where you had two puddles going on, right? One on this side, one on this side. You would whip, long arc, go back into your portal, whip, long arc, go back into your portal. Like a V like that. Another one I was doing, hopefully you guys could catch a glimpse in the art shots, was just a simple circular motion around, around. I'd rather do the V. I don't know, I got used to the V one. But it depends on you guys. That's two ways of uh, capping, filling, hot passing, and putting the root in. A lot of guys weld different, but this is the way I weld. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you find these useful, guys, give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit the notification button, guys. Peace out.